So this video is going to be showing how to convert an old slide projector into an alternative process in larger sorts. Um, and the first thing you're going to need is a projector and I'll go over exactly how to start with conversion. Okay, so first you're going to need a slide projector. I use the kind with the sides. Uh, you stick the slide in via the side. There's several different models of these. Um, they can be picked up pretty cheaply. This one's already apart. I don't have one to take apart to show you the whole process, but all you have to do is remove the green filter, which that was what was in there. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm assuming it's used to absorb heat for when you're projecting, um, but you take that out, make sure the condenser lenses are in there and good and clean. You also remove all the back. This is where the actual lens or the uh, light source was, the halogen light source, and it had a, a lamp housing to reflect the light in and all that. But you remove all of that, the you have to take the uh, cover off and all that because it's not gonna, it's just gonna get in the way. And then on the front, I had to remove, there's a bunch of components here. I'm assuming it was designed to put 35 millimeter straight down in it or through the side. But all of that was in the way, so I removed it. I don't, I can't really, I can't really go into detail on that as far as this because you're going to have, each one is going to be different and unique. That's what I've found so far. And you have to come up with unique solutions one way or the other. Like... The way you put the film in here, I had to make a cardboard um, negative carrier that just slides on the side. Um, but that's basically get a slide projector, the, the easiest one you can slide film into, and strip it down to where it's just the condenser assembly, uh, the lens itself, and a way to put the negatives in, and then you can move on to the next step. Okay, for the rest of the components you're going to need a heat sink of some kind that will fit in your projector, a 380 nanometer ultraviolet LED, which this isn't, but this is just for comparison. This is a 10 watt LED, they're all the same size. You're going to need a buck converter, that's to, um, that's to put the voltage at the correct level for the LED so it doesn't burn up, and your power source and a fan. Now these these components will always stay the same. This is a 12 volt 2 amp power source. However, your heat sink and your fan are going to have to be whatever you can find to fit in your projection system. Um, and that's just as long as it's got enough surface area to pull the heat away from the LED and some way to attach it to where a fan, and the fan doesn't have to go super fast, it just needs to pull air around it to keep it cool. That's all you got to do on that. Um, and then I'll show you how you align the LED and um, get all that to work. Okay, the next step, and very critical, is lining up the LED so that it'll be in the correct position. It needs to be the right height and all of that, so you put your um, heat sink about where it'll be about where the lamp that was at its focal point was so it's somewhere around here you, as long as you get the LED attached in the right spot you can move it forward and back after that to get that correct but put your heat sink roughly where it should be and then shine a flashlight in the end until you see the circle well, circle whatever spots you can get as aligned as possible, and you'll see roughly where it needs to be. Then all you got to do is take a marker and mark the spot, which is the most center of it, and that'll tell you where you need to put your LED at. The next step is attaching the LED and how I do it is I just use this it's thermal glue you can get really cheap um, all you have to do is put a small spot of it wherever you're going to place the LED place the LED on it 
push it down and then what I do after it's make sure it's directly over that center you found with the flashlight then I'll put something heavy on it overnight um, directly on the LED uh, to help to help keep it where it's supposed to be and to make sure it adheres correctly but after that step then you can start soldering the other components on it okay this next step is getting the voltage correct in your converter so we're just using a simple 12 volt 2 amp uh, AC adapter that you can get for next to nothing on Amazon or eBay but you have to lower the voltage because the voltage that the 10 watt LED uses is 9 to 11 volts we'll be using 11 but we have to get it as close to that as possible LEDs are very sensitive to voltage if you would put 12 volts in it it would work for a few minutes and then burn up and then all that work is gone so I'm not going to go into how to solder because there's all kinds of videos and it's just this isn't even complicated soldering it's just barely sticking stuff together so basically this converter has power coming in which is the 12 volts from the adapter and then the power going out which I have connected to a voltmeter to get it set is adjusted by this little potentiometer so you plug in the power source turn your voltmeter on and then what we want to do is turn it down until it's just under 11 volts so it won't burn up the LED and in this particular one it's just counterclockwise turns it down so we want to get just under 11 because 11 is its maximum and you don't want to you don't want to be there too close or it could mess it up all right so right there we're going to go 10.9 volts all right so that's done so 12 volts is going in from the adapter and 10.9 or 11 volts coming out to power the LED now you do have to have a, a fan it doesn't have to be big it just needs to be just enough to move air through the heat sink I've tried with and without and without it just gets too hot but it just needs to be big enough to just push a little air um, now the fans are just I use are just 12 volt PC fans you don't have to drive them directly off the 12 volts so they can all be intertied right here on the 11 volts we put out It'll run a little slower, but that's fine. It'll be less vibration, which is what you want with this. See, the, the, the more mechanical components, like anything that can move or spin, you could get vibration, which can affect the picture quality. So, um, the slower, the better, but just enough to get air to move around it. What you're seeing here is the completed assembly. So, you have your power adapter and the one I bought came with this little attachment that you just put the positive and negative out of so um, that goes into here which goes straight to your little converter in this case I actually did attach the fan to the 12 volt side but it doesn't have to be it can either be attached to this side or this side it doesn't matter and then the 11 volts coming out of this goes straight to the LED which is as you see glued to it. I put a T there for top so I knew it was supposed to stand that way. And then all you have to do is mount it in your projector where this is in the right location and then this is just anywhere close enough to move a little air and that's really all there is to it. And then and there really isn't any adjustment it's just all or nothing on this so when you plug it in it should come on and then the fan will spin and that's all there is to it. As far as placement in the projector, it's just going like this. Um, just make sure your wires aren't blocking the LED when you're sticking it in there so that it doesn't make a shadow. 
but um, all you're really doing is sticking these together and in this case this heat sink and fan worked out perfectly in size and then all you have to do is move it to get the right you know basically you project it on a wall and move this backward and forward until you don't see any like vignetting or shadows or anything and then you're done there but uh, then what I do is cure it with tape because I'm not this wasn't designed really to be permanent it was more as an experiment but I tape it down so it can't move and then you want to cover the bottom and top with some foil or tape or something so that when you're projecting there's not all this UV light spilling out and then it's going to ruin your picture and that's about it that's what I can think of um, so the next few videos that are come, going to come out are going to be about some new projects I'm working on um, I bought two 4x5 cameras uh, one crown graphic and one Calumet or Camulet, however you say it, um, it's a monorail. Um, the cameras are in good shape and one of the lenses was great, but this other lens, the shutter on the fast speeds it works, but on the slow speeds, like I can't even use the one second or bulb or time because something's messed up inside the lens. Um, but that got me to decide to go ahead and work on this project where I'm using this electronic shutter I got off of eBay to um, actually be the shutter for the camera. This will be for the studio camera because uh, this is just too much stuff to take out in the field. So I put the good lens on the field camera. Um, also I only shoot uh, ortho litho film or eventually I'm going to be doing dry plates. I, I'm not really into wet plate photography, but dry plates, I might be getting into that where I'm making my own. So, this made me work on a bunch of different projects. So, I'm making a electronic shutter for to use with this lens, and even I'm going to test using it on this um, enlarger lens. And uh, then I'm going to work on a electronic driven um, guillotine shutter. For these large projector lenses. I'm also working on some lenses that come from Alibaba to try to see if this person could use very inexpensive projector lenses on um, like litho film or I mean any film but just so there's an inexpensive alternative. This I just happened to get in a bunch of stuff from eBay. I'm glad I did because this is a really good lens. But so I'm going to be making an electronic shutter with an Arduino box that allows you to select a shutter speed. I'm going to be making a, um, a exposure meter that works either for standard or um, orthochromatic photography. I, I, I'm wanting something that's very specific on that. And also I want to be working on a flash that's designed specifically for uh, orthochromatic, so wet plate, dry plate, ortholitho film, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm working on an LED flash that uses um, royal blue LEDs, several hundred watts, that would make it easy for someone to use, you know, and get and get good results and sh slower shutter speeds without having to have huge amounts of studio light or natural light. So. That is the project to come, and I will see you all next time.